Hey everybody, welcome back to Video So Terry gonna continue the series is that an analog in your pocket. Are you just happy to see me? And today we're taking a look at Hotego and his team's beta core for 1943 by Capcom. It's an absolute classic Tate or vertical shmup, and it is here in beta format. This came out about 10 days ago as the recording of this video, depending on when I schedule it, maybe it's been out a little bit longer. But it's always great to see a new arcade core from Hotego and his team come to Analog Pocket. And today it's going to be 1943. For you too far involved, do you me a huge favor? Go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But I absolutely love 1943, even if I'm not graded it. And I actually have a very nostalgic reason for that even if it was not from when the time it was released. When I used to live in Brooklyn in the mid-2000s, I would take my laundry to the laundromat before I smartened up and started paying somebody to do it for me. That laundromat had two arcade cabinets, Street Fighter II Championship Edition, as well as a 1943 cabinet, and the woman that owned the place would let me sit there, drink beer, play video games, while I waited for my laundry to wash and dry. I never got any better at it, I'm still just average, but it's one of those games it has a special place in my heart because when I played it, it was just a fun time in my life. Grab a beer, play some 1943, get some clean clothes, and go home and restart my next week. So to say I have an emotional attachment to this game definitely would be true. And it is one of those absolute classic games from Capcom before the era of the CPS, CPS 1.5, and CPS 2. And it definitely shows. This is an old school shmup. It's got the old school difficulty. It's not a bullet hell shmup but it is definitely going to give you a run for your money when it comes to the difficulty curve. I'm playing this on the normal difficulty and there's so many different toggleable options as far as that is concerned, but I definitely recommend starting it normal or maybe even dialing it back a bit. But Hotego's been on a tear with the arcade cores lately, and getting something like 1943 here has been a ton of fun. This is just Hall of Fame first ballot levels of good for the 80s Capcom, and this is kind of a different era than the stuff you see on CPS 1 and CPS 2. It's definitely not a bullet hell shmup, and I kind of love that about that. I love all shmups, and usually when I'm playing a Tate shmup, it's going to be a bullet hell shooter, but in this instance, it's been fun just to kind of sit around on my couch, play this game, and have fun with it. And if you were wondering, sometimes I do just sit on my couch with my laptop and a capture card and play these games for the channel. This is one that I just immediately started playing, and I was taken back to that time in my life when I was in my early 20s living in New York City. And the good thing is, even though this is a beta core, for the most part, it's like 98% completely buttoned up. The only issues I saw were the following. In some of the results screens, you get a little bit of garbage graphic around the text, and in one level, the background scrolling jumps ever so slightly. Otherwise, I haven't experienced any issues with this core whatsoever. That's kind of part and parcel for the Hotego cores. The betas are like 95% of the way there, and when they get 100% of the way there, they go to public. But if you are wondering, you do need to be a Patreon member of Hotego to get this core. It'll come down with a downloader, but you do need to have that beta key installed on your pocket to be able to actually play it. And you'll see a little bit of that garbage right there below the 82%. That's honestly the biggest bug I encountered my entire time playing 1943. And when you do add this to your pocket, you're going to have three different versions. I am playing the Japanese version 1943 Kai right here. And again, if you just watch all of the scrolling, all of the parallax, all of the graphics, you really can't see anything wrong with it until later on in the video. And if I do see it while I'm talking, I will point it out. And you'll see there's a bunch of different power-ups on the screen and kind of just like ASO2 on the Neo Geo, if you shoot the power-ups, they are going to change. You're going to be able to actually select your way through the game, and that is going to be crucially important. If there's one thing I will strike this game for, and it's something that Capcom did a lot back in the day, as did Sega, when your health gets into the red, there's going to be a health warning siren going off the entire time you play. So if it looks like I intentionally take some deaths, that's because I got sick of hearing that noise. I really wish this was something that you could turn off in the core, but honestly, it's how the arcade board works, so it should work the same here. And you'll see that I just did shoot that power up to be able to kind of navigate around to what I wanted and then proceeded to accidentally shoot right into a ship. But hey, it happens to the best of us. And I will say 1943 also has a great soundtrack, so long as you're not listening to that low health warning. Again, it's just one of those design decisions that was popular in the late 80s and early 90s, and I'm so glad arcade games and video games in general completely got away from that. But I'm going to give you a 45 second sound sample of the course audio quality without that warning going off or else you'd probably hate me in the end so listen and I'll be right back
The sound effects are a tiny bit loud, but honestly, that's how Capcom did things back in the day, and so did Sega. And you see there, that is not a mistake. There was a cow bonus item that came out of the hold of that aircraft carrier. Not exactly sure why they put that in there, but it is always fun. And as we scroll left and right and kind of just play this game, it's definitely an earlier generation arcade game, but I think the graphics really do hold up well, and they look really nice here on Analog Pocket, whether you're on the screen or if you're playing over dock mode. But I will say, at least for me, when I'm in handheld mode with Tate or Vertical Games, like 1943 I do feel like the play area is ever so slightly small because the projectiles are not huge you really need to be staring at the screen intently and I've got 2010 vision but let me know down below if you think sometimes the Tate games especially in the shmup format can be a little small on the screen obviously that's not why analog designed the screen the way they did it was for Game Boy style games but it is something that I do think of every once in a while but as we move on to the next stage here I do like that this game mixes itself up with the color scape but honestly after a while each stage is going to start to feel a little bit samey for lack of a better term you're gonna see the same enemies and you're gonna be seeing some of the same battleships as well but the fun is in the challenge this is not a short game either Capcom definitely elongated this they wanted you to put as many quarters in as possible but you're going to get your money's worth here in Analog Pocket because the quarters are virtual. You just hit the button and they magically appear. And if for any reason you're trying to play this game and you can't put coins in, that means you either don't have the Hotego beta key or you have the incorrect key. You don't have the newest one. I get a lot of questions about that. Why can't they coin up in Hotego games? That is because you don't have that beta key installed properly. But this is just one of those classic arcade games. If you have made a list of Capcom's top 50 games of all time in arcades, I think 1943 would probably be in like the mid to early 40s. But tell me down below what you think of that. It's one of the titles. I'm sure if you grew up with it, there's more nostalgia for it. But my nostalgia just comes from encountering a cabinet back in the 2000s and really just being in a time and place where I'm like, hell, I'll spend $5 to play an arcade game while I wash my pants. Who cares? And I wish I could go back to that moment in time and see that cabinet. There's so many different places I played games back in the day that I'm never able to go back to because they just don't exist. They're just locked in my head as memories. So stuff like this 1943 course on the analog pocket help me and help you relive those moments in time. If you ever did play an arcade cabinet for this, tell me down below where you encountered it. I would be really curious. And the best part is too, if you're not familiar with the game, it is a two player game. So just throw your analog pocket on the dock, grab a second controller, hand it to a friend or an enemy, depending on how you feel about them and just play the game in two player mode. It does become easier when you have a second player because each person can focus on a different side of the screen. Because as you get to later stages, the projectiles are going to be flying. There's going to be a lot of stuff on screen at once, but the nice thing is you at least get a health bar it's not that classic shmup where you take one hit die and then get pushed back a minute into the game with all of your power-ups lost that's why i always love this game you could just continue from where you stopped and you could kind of just brute force see some progress i don't love the shmups that kick you back a minute with no power-ups they always drive me nuts and I usually end up turning them off long before I'd actually get into the game. But it's just so much fun to see Hoteo and his team continue to bring these cores to us. We've been getting some Capcom stuff, we've been getting some Konami stuff, and I hope we see some more Taito stuff as well. If there's not a Taito F3 core in development somewhere in the FGGA scape, I definitely think there should be, and I'll probably be talking about that soon on the channel. But yeah, 1943 is here today. It's definitely worth checking out. It is one of those classic Capcom arcade games that either pretty much everyone knows or is at least heard of. And of course, the 19XX and 1940 series would continue onto the Capcom CPS and CPS2 with different games in the franchise as well. So there's more than one 1940 game to play on Analog Pocket. And that is always a fun time. But I'll definitely keep making these videos as new cores come out. If there's anything on Analog Pocket I haven't done yet that you'd like to see a video on, leave me a comment down below. I definitely take your guys feedback into account when I make these videos and sometimes you guys give me an idea that I never thought of and I say hell that's a good one and I definitely steal it and make a video out of it but short of that go update your pocket get 1943 start playing today and be prepared to die because the game like I said pulls no punches see you next time bye bye